And I believe they are some of the most constructive and productive discussions we've had. I've been meeting with President Xi since both of us were Vice President over 10 years ago. Our meetings have always been candid and straightforward. We haven't always agreed, but they've been straightforward. And today, build on the groundwork related over the past several months of high-level diplomacy between our teams. We've made some important progress, I believe. First, I'm pleased to announce that after many years of being on hold, we are restarting cooperation between the United States and PRC on counter-narcotics. In 2019, you may remember, China took action to greatly reduce the amount of fentanyl shipped directly from China to the United States. But in the years since that time, the challenge has evolved from finished fentanyl to fentanyl chemical ingredients and, and pill presses, which are being shipped without control. And by the way, some of these pills are being inserted in other drugs, like cocaine. A lot of people are dying. More people in the United States between the ages of 18 and 49 die from fentanyl than from guns, car accidents, or any other cause, period. So today, with this new understanding, we're taking action to significantly reduce the flow of precursor chemicals and pill presses from China to the Western Hemisphere. It's going to save lives, and I appreciate President Xi's commitment on this issue. President Xi and I tasked our teams to maintain a policy and law enforcement coordination going forward to make sure it works. I also want to thank the bipartisan congressional delegation to China, led by Leader Schumer, in October for supporting efforts, uh, this effort so strongly. Secondly, and this is critically important, we're reassuming military-to-military -military contacts, direct contacts. As a lot of you press know who follow this, that's been cut off, and it's been worry worrisome. That's how accidents happen, misunderstandings. So we're back to direct, open, clear, direct communications on a, on a, ba on a direct basis. Vital miscalculations on either side can, uh, can cause real, real trouble with, a, with a, a, a country like China or any other major country. And so I think we've made real, real progress there as well. And thirdly, we're going to get our experts together to discuss risk and safety issues associated with artificial intelligence. As many of you who travel with me around the world, almost everywhere I go, every major leader wants to talk about the impact of artificial intelligence. These are tangible steps in the right direction to determine what's useful and what's not useful, what's dangerous and what's acceptable. Moreover, there are evidence of cases that, uh, that I've made all along. The United States will continue to compete vigorously with the PRC, but will manage that competition responsibly so it doesn't veer into conflict or accidental conflict. And where it's possible, where our interests are coincide, we're going to work together like we did on fentanyl. That's what the world expects of us. The rest of the world expects, not just in people in China and the United States, but the rest of the world expects that of us. And that's what the United States is going to be doing. <clears throat> Today, President Xi and I also exchanged views on a range of regional and global issues, including Russia's refusal and brutal war to stop the war and brutal war of aggression against Ukraine and the and conflict in Gaza. And as I always do, I raised areas where the United States has concerns about the PRC's actions, including detained and, ex and, uh, and, and exit banned U.S. citizens, human rights, and corrective uh, co coercive activities in the South China Sea. We discussed all three of those things. I gave them names of individuals that we think are being held, and hopefully we can get them released as well. No agreement on that. No agreement on that. I also stressed the importance of peace and stability in the Taiwan Straits. It's clear that we object to, be, to Beijing's non-market economic practices and disadvantage that, that disadvantage American businesses and workers, and that we'll continue to address them. And I named what I thought a number of those were. I welcome the positive steps we've taken today. And it's important for the world to see that we're implementing the approach in the best traditions of American diplomacy. We're talking to our competitors. And the key, uh, and, and just just talking, just made blunt with one another. So there's no misunderstanding as a key element to maintaining global stability and delivering for the American people. And in the months ahead, we're going to continue to preserve and pursue high-level diplomacy at the PRC in both directions.
to keep the lines of communication open, including between President Xi and me. He and I agreed that each one of us could pick up the phone, call directly, and would be heard immediately. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.